Welcome traders, this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. We're going to get started here in just 30 seconds. Okay, welcome. It is 1 p.m. London time, and we are starting with this week's live market trade analysis session. Like I said, with me, Patrick Munley. Before we get started, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some time to play with and some capital. I decided to uh, start day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gamble. After some early beginners luck, I managed to rack up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginners luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant a significant six-figure hit to my capital to say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suit my persona personality and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster ride of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned the outcome of an individual trade or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients through the Tickmill blog. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the technical and fundamental drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about three, two or three markets that I'm actively tracking for the trading session ahead. And I share those through the uh, Tickmill Trading View account. I'll post a link to, um, to that account so that you can, uh, if you choose to, follow along with those trading ideas as I post them on a daily basis. I also run Tickmill's e-mini strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan out, uh, outlining my trading uh, strategy for the cash trading session ahead. I give my bias and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 
seven and a half thousand points of profit since we launched the group uh, in April 2021. The second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Telegram Trading Group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis and trades. I also provide a live market commentary where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a, a flavor of where I'm coming from. Like I say, I'll post links into the chats for uh, for these groups. You can just request access uh, for the um, Facebook group there where I give uh, the daily trade plan. I also uh, provide um, market re uh, institutional research from uh, from tier one investment banks. And um, you can follow along through the group and it's updated on a, a day, throughout the day, really, uh, throughout the trading day anyway. And, uh, and it's full of uh, some great information. And like I say, uh, a bunch of uh, trading opportunities as well that I'm uh, actively tracking in the futures market. I share into the Facebook group as well as through the Telegram group where there's a little bit more information and insight given on a daily basis. So let's take a look at the charts this week and do something a little bit different. We're going to change the time frame up a little bit. We're going to look at uh, multi time frame analysis here. We have the four hour, which is the biggest screen in the, uh, on the left here. And then we have the weekly and the daily on the right hand side. And we're going to take a look through some of the charts. Obviously, we're coming out of a holiday, uh, oh, sorry, we're in the holiday shortened trading period um, for most uh, money centers. Uh, Friday, uh, markets were closed, and yesterday, a majority were also closed. So we're just coming back online. And what I would uh, caution you on this week, especially, is that um, volumes uh, tend to be a little bit lower as uh, as many people are uh, are on holiday. They'll have either taken a holiday last week or they'll be on holiday this week. And hence, participation is a little bit lower. And we tend to, uh, to be a little bit in terms of a range environment, uh, is my experience anyway, during these holiday periods. But for next week, I'd imagine volumes to kick back up again and participation to increase. So let's take a look at where we are in some big bigger picture and some levels that I'm paying attention to. So in terms of the S&P 500, I'm looking at this 4156, 4160 to act as resistance uh, for the uh, for the coming sessions. We've got CPI, the CPI report coming out tomorrow. So I'm not anticipating that we are going to, uh, to break ranges in advance of that CPI report. So I'd anticipate a range environment. So I'm looking at, whilst we hold this resistance, a pullback ideally to test into the ascending trend channel support and these prior highs here. So 4080, 4085 is a level I'll be paying very close attention to if we get down there, watching for bullish reversal patterns. My next upside objective will be that we take out the 4170s and 4220 is a key level. It's a prior high. It also represents a, uh, a two sigma volatility event based on yesterday's close. So keep that in mind, because more often than not, uh, when prices test that two sigma volatility level, uh, pretty much 90% of the time they'll close below there. So that's a key level to keep a to keep a, abreast of is that uh, that force to 20. Now, the equality objective that I have, and for those that here for the first time, when I refer to equality, what I mean is equal leg swings in the market, which have a tendency to play out over and over again. We have a 131 extension from our equality test. You'll note we tested that 4171 and got an immediate reaction. Um, those you will often, and those of you who have uh, for not, not for the first time you follow along with my work, you'll know that uh, they have a tendency to act as uh, support and resistance levels once we uh, once we identify them. So what I'm looking for is any move back through that 41.72. We've got daily projected range resistance, 41.74. So a close back through 41.75 uh, would open up that 42.20 area. And in extension, then we have that three sigma volatility target at 42.43. If we trade up into either of those levels, I'll certainly be looking uh, for opportunities to fade that move. And again, I'm not calling an absolute high or an absolute low uh, ever. What I'm looking for is just tradable opportunities and uh, and uh, at predefined levels. And those are the levels I'll be paying attention to 
in terms of the e-mini S&P as we head into this week. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has been outperforming. We're finding some resistance here, range resistance kicking in, 13,200. So here's what I will be watching in terms of the NASDAQ. So as we hold this current area as resistance, so 13,210, I look for a pullback here to develop into the support area. So if we get back down here, so I'd be looking for 12,819. And then from there, we watch for another attempt higher. And the, the initial target on any push higher, if we hold this current resistance area, will be a move back in to test that corrected trend channel uh, as resistance. So that would give us a move back into 13,127 from that 12,819 level. If we lose 12,819 and we take out this projected trend channel support, Next area of interest is going to be 12,698. And below there, we have the 161 extension and the weekly S3, 12,572, and weekly projected range support. So if we got to pull, if, if things extended to the downside and we get into this area, then once again, I watch to see if we've got any momentum divergence and I watch for bullish reversal patterns to play a counter trend move uh, from, that, from that area where we have these three levels of confluence in play. Moving to the Dow Jones. <clears throat> Dow looking for any pullbacks into the ascending trend channel support, 33,370s, bullish reversal patterns, we look for new highs. And we would, uh, let me just draw this in for you. So if that is going to be our pullback into this area, first stop will be 34,019. That also, so that's the 127 extension of this projected consolidation. We also have daily projected range resistance coming in there at 34,036. If we don't get the pullback and the Dow extends from uh, current levels to, uh, to the upside, then again, I'm watching this zone th just above 34,000. I would anticipate Dow is going to struggle to make new momentum highs here. So we'd have uh, momentum divergence in play. So any move into this area, if we don't get a decent pullback, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So with this type of move, I would then be watching for that deeper corrective move to play out before once again trying to set a base and move higher. So these are the areas of interest for me, 34,000 just above, or back down into trend channel support, 33,438, and I'd look to play off those levels uh, in the uh, in the opposing direction, given the current structure that I'm seeing in the Dow. This looks like a wave three extension. This is going to be a wave four consolidation, and we'll look for a wave five to the upside. Noteworthy with the Dow is this daily trend line resistance also comes in just around that 34,000 level. So I, I think on the first test of this 34,000, it's going to prove sticky and certainly tradable. Uh, to my mind. Moving to the DAX. <coughs> DAX uh, trading, developing this wedge scenario. So pullbacks to find support initially here into uh, the pivot 15,730. And for those of you who here, uh, follow me weekly, the 16,000 level is an area I'm looking to get tested. And from there, I would anticipate again, we have a tradable pullback. Let's see what we've got in terms of that last leg to the downside. Yeah, there we have it. 127 extension coinciding with the weekly R2, coinciding with the ascending trend channel resistance. Just anything, any first touch above that 16,000 level, as long as we maintain momentum divergence. So you can see we've got a, a nice push to the upside in terms of momentum here. We're starting to roll over. So any last, last push into that 16,000, I'm looking to fade, certainly on the basis that we don't make new highs in terms of momentum. Moving to the FTSE, uh, short FTSE this morning, we have uh, tested into this descending trend line resistance off the all-time highs that we saw earlier in the year, seeing a little bit of a pullback here. What I'm anticipating now is that we get a pullback equal in scope or a scope and scale, sorry, to that last move from uh, last major corrective move. And that should take us back down into test this projected tra ascending trend channel support 75, 70, uh, sorry, 75, 50s. From there, watch for bullish reversal patterns. And I think we get an extension then at 
a bit of five wave sequence here up into the high volume node 79.18s. Any loss at this stage of the uh, projected trend channel support will be a, a pretty bearish development for the FTSE. No, we have traded into that target zone. So we were looking initially for a test of the equal leg, which we got a little bit of selling push back into our 78.6% retracement from our 73.30 uh, low, and then found buyers and now we're testing up into the next uh, resistance zone. So um, sitting, uh, currently sitting short, uh, short the footsie um, from this morning. Let's take a look at the Nifty. Nifty has uh, moved higher. Uh, where, where we get these gaps and um, we start to challenge some prior swings, this suggests to me that we've got a wave three developing, wave three high. You can see we're not getting any momentum divergence. So I would be watching for any pullback now in a three wave fashion, set a wave four low, and, uh, and I'm going to be looking to, to long that, certainly if we've got a retest of this uh, descending trend channel resistance now to act as support. So anything into 17,500 zone, watch for bullish reversal patterns there. I think we can get an extension up into the 18,000 and the high volume node with the next target, 18,180 is what we'll be looking for with the nifty. Moving to the bonds, I use the TLT as a proxy for long-term bonds. It's an ETF, the iShares 20-year treasury bond. We are once again testing our resistance zone. I'm relatively confident that we are going to break through here. Uh, so I'm looking for a move through 110. I want to be engaged on the long side, as I've talked about over uh, previous weeks. Our target is the equality objective at 116.58. Uh, we've got a little internal trend channel support here. So pullbacks here that find support into the 106 level. I think uh, bullish reversal patterns, you can get aggressive there and start trading this to the upside and look for that breakthrough 110 on our upside objective. We've got monthly projected range resistance just below 116 and 116.58 is the equality objective versus the swing structure we have in place from these lows and the... Uh, Swing low here at 98.80 gives us that 116.58 equality objective. Moving to the Forex complex, let's take a look at the dollar index. <clears throat> dollar, again, I think we're in a consolidation phase here. Difficult uh, ahead of the CPI. Obviously, we're going to get some noise and volatility around that. But the setup to my mind at this stage is that we are looking to test resistance into the 103 handle we've got weekly projected range resistance just above 103.17 so i think the dollar is correcting at this stage now any loss of this uh, projected pitchfork support i think we trade down and take a look below the 101 level before trying to uh, once again build a base for a correction i think this my view at the moment is i think the dollar is potentially ripe for a short-term correction before heading lower again. So um, I'm not, uh, again, not calling a bottom in the dollar or um, a top in the euro or sterling or whatever. Um, what I'm talking about here are tradable corrected moves. So I'm looking for any pullbacks into this pitchfork support to find support 101.60s. I think we can take a look at 103s. Any loss of this uh, trend channel support on a closing basis, I think we'll take a look at under 101 and we'll see if, uh, if any buyers are home there. Euro dollar. The euro dollar still has a um, a sequence here that doesn't appear complete to me, and this is uh, an ending diagonal scenario, which would take us into these prior swing high. Uh, sorry, prior swing highs, and um, from there, I'm watching for this one ten to act as initial resistance here on the daily time frame, as high as one ten thirty two. So, what's the setup in terms of the four hour here? Well, like I say, it's this ending diagonal. So it, to my mind, this sequence would suggest that we have one more high to get into that 110.15, 110.30 area. And then I think we could see a deeper pullback. Now, this is kind of, um, uh, it's unusual from my perspective anyway, for there to be a lack of synchronicity in terms of the dollar and the euro sequence. So this is kind of, th this scenario I'm looking at with the euro is, is counter to the idea in the dollar whereby we take a look under 101 uh, before we get a more, a more significant bounce in the dollar. So that would be the, the uh, euro taking a look above 110. 
bearing in mind they trade in an inverse fashion. The alternative scenario is here, we hold the current highs. So this is the idea of the um, dollar index going to 103 before lower. So if we hold these current highs, you can see we'd have an equality objective, which will take us back down into that 107.80 support zone. And we've got the value area high here on the volume profile in there as well. We've got that price ring low. So this is, if the dollar, if the euro dollar can't hold support in that 108.50 area, we look for another leg to the downside before it finds support and makes that move for 110. And that would broadly coincide with the dollar index taking a look at 103, selling off, and then taking a look below, below 101 before putting in a base for a, a more sustained near-term corrective move uh, is, my, is my view on the, the FX major there. Sterling <clears throat> trading in a potential channel now. So as we hold current highs, I look for any move into the trend channel support. Weekly S1, 122.80s, weekly projected range support, 122.50. So any move into here, I want to be long, and we still have that open upside objective, which is the weekly trend line resistance coming in 126.70s. And that also represents the 161 extension of this initial swing structure. So again, just to be clear, so we were looking for an equality objective. We've got the equality objective test, held that 124.10 on the first move. We pulled back into uh, 122.70s, held support there, then traded up into the 131 zone, got a pullback there. We now look to be holding or anticipate we hold this 122.80 area, and then we get this push up into the uh, the final target zone for this move in terms of uh, sterling 126.50s, 126.60s, giving us that weekly trend channel resistance from there and anticipate a, uh, a deeper corrective move. Moving to the dollar yen. <clears throat> dollar yen has a quality objective now versus the swing low at 130.60. I'm looking for a test of 134.70s. And from there again, I, I see a trade. I'm watching for bearish reverse patterns. We've got weekly projected range resistance just above 135.13. So we watch bearish reversal patterns there. My first target will be a move down in initially the high volume node, 133.10, and then daily projected range support and this uh, potential then for an inverse head and shoulder scenario. But just that, using that as a target at this stage, we've got the weekly pivot, so 132.20s. So decent trade from that 134.70s. You could be looking to risk maybe 50, 50 or so pips. Let's pick up uh, potential for 200 plus if the trade plays out. Aussie structure is uh, is not as clear. We uh, we tested the invalidation zone. We were looking for this level to hold target level 6820s. We tested it yesterday during the holiday thing trade. We got a a weak bounce into the high volume mode. So for me at the moment, there isn't really a clear setup in the Aussie. So I stand aside in terms of the Aussie and these a bunch of these antipodeans really. Um, we did get the equality test in the Kiwi and got a nice rejection there. So what I look for in the Kiwi now is can we actually take out this, uh, this pivot here at the 6160s? So if we can, then that to my mind would set up a retest. Certainly we look for initially in logical progression, we look for the weekly projected range support, and then we look for a test of the price cycle lows at 6080s. Moving to the commodities, gold. We are looking for a test of this 1978 now in gold. If we can get down into that area, I watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And you look then for a break of the corrective channel here to take you back up through the 2002 level. And I'd be looking for daily projected rain, uh, sorry, weekly projected range resistance 2081. And then obviously we have these prior cycle highs here at uh, which we'd be taking out then on a, I doubt we do it on a closing basis. This is the third test into this area. And I think we get another pullback, but the break higher I do sense is coming this year. And the target area is the 127 extension, 2204, ultimately. I think we've got a bit of work to do. And we and allowing for that dollar index to have a, a, an interim corrective move so that uh, momentum can reload and reset to, uh, to ultimately take us lower in the dollar, higher in gold and FX majors. Crude oil continues to consolidate. So what we anticipate, 
like like I said last week is that we are going to hold the gap here gap's going to act as support and we're going to see a fifth wave extension so our fifth wave we anticipate is going to be equal to wave one so we are looking for a move into the gap to find support so 7740s 7640s somewhere in this area we watch for bullish reversal patterns and then we look for a move up into the 8490s and then 85 would become a magnet there for uh, for crude oil let's just see where this trend line would come in if we extend it out It'd actually be even deeper than that let's see so the gap is 75 centimeters. So we could we, technically even pulling back into 75 centimeters would still have a bullish structure uh, for crude oil. But at this stage, I think we could uh, we could see something a little bit more shallow than that. And I'd take my first look would be at 7750s as uh, as support there, filling like a half gap and then getting the extension to the upside. Bitcoin trading to our target. We eventually uh, got a test of that 30,000 level over the weekend. We we're looking for that triangle break to set that up. Now, again, just in terms of basic structure and having some, some trading information, information that you can repeatedly use, transferable to each and every payout, every time frame. We haven't got any momentum divergence yet. So Fading this move, to my mind anyway, and from 15 plus years experience on the market is a lower probability scenario. It's possible that this is the high and we roll over from here, fine, but less probable. To my mind, we need to uh, grind things out a bit here now. And what I look for is three pushes, uh, three attempts higher, where each attempt fails to make new highs in terms of momentum. That to me is a much higher probability counter trend trade setup. So at this stage, I'd be looking for a move up into 31,300, 31,800 zone. Uh, then if this trade is going to set up and technically uh, meets my criteria, we'd be looking for momentum divergence to fail to make new highs as price is making new highs. And then that sets up the trade to retest the breakout. And more often than not, what you get is a test of the apex of the triangle, which coincides with the high volume node back into the 28,000 level before again resetting. I'm not calling the top here. We can definitely trade higher in terms of Bitcoin, but that's the technical setup for me at the moment in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, last one I'll take a look at this week is Ether. Has a nice uh, technical trade setup here. We have on the daily time frame an equality objective 2080 versus our lows and our potential, we'll call it a B wave low at this point, uh, 1373. And what I like about this setup is that we are aiming for the target zone for that 2080, and we're doing it as an ending diagonal. So we're starting to run out. Momentum is starting to fade. So I look for any pullbacks into the ascending trend line support. 1860, watch a bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, trade to that 2080 target. And from there, then I'd be watching for momentum divergence to have significantly developed or matured even. And then we look for a pullback and my target would be down into the weekly projected range support at the 1750s. So that concludes this week's whistle stop tour of the markets I'm watching. I think there's, like I said, there is opportunity developing. Um, be cognizant of the fact we're in a, a, a lower participation, lower volume environment for the remainder of this week. So you can get exaggerated moves. And so again, if you're looking to play counter trend, remember to to have additional confirmation. You want to see the bearish reversal patterns in, in on the time frame you're trading, and most importantly, pay attention to that momentum divergence because it's an, an additional confirmation that more often than not needs to be addressed by the market for the market to continue to trend. So that's just uh, something to have in your back pocket for the trading week ahead. Are there any questions? Does anyone want me to take a look at the chart I haven't covered, or any question regarding a chart I have covered? Something wasn't clear. Now is your time to uh, send those through. Let me do something as well here. Um, try something else, trading view. Here we go. This is the link for the, I've posted the uh, Facebook group link in there. That's for the TradingView daily trade ideas I share. And for those who want to access the Tickmill blog, 
where I also share the, uh, the daily market outlook. And there are other great analysts on there as well, the strategists providing insights. Uh, feel free to uh, to log in there and you'll find, uh, you'll find access to a wealth of great technical and fundamental analysis uh, from, the, from the guys on the team. Okay, I don't see any questions coming through. So I'm gonna consider that I've done a reasonable job of explaining my market view to, uh, to you guys this week. As always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much. <laughs>